Good morning, Lake Michigan Christian Center. I'm so glad you could join us for our online service. We've got a special guest today. You're going to love it. But before we get to that, we've got an online meet and greet. Can you do me a favor? Reach out to everyone you know. Send them a link. Let's get as many people as possible watching this week's online service. Okay, I'll see you on the other side of the meet and greet. Good morning, Lake Michigan Christian Center. I'm so glad you could join us for the Ministry of the Word this morning. I've got a special guest, Andy Miller. Some of you know him, and he is ministering in New York City. He's serving in YWAM, and I wanted him to come to share a little bit about what his ministry is all about. Again, very exciting because it's ministry in the big city, you know, kind of a big urban setting and most of you know we've been in the book of romans and in particular over the last couple of weeks we've been in romans 9 and you know it deals with paul trying to minister to a really hard group of people in this case the jews and you know when you think of new york city you think of up and comers you you think of and again i know there's a lot of uh you know there's crime and there's all kinds of difficult things but when you deal with downtown it's it's a lot of um you know uh, very upwardly mobile kind of people and how would you minister to them and some of them are not being reached how do we do that and those are some of the dilemmas that the apostle paul dealt with and i want to just set this up by reading the intro of the book of romans because paul is trying to reach uh the capital city of rome which is not unlike new york city new york city of course is not our capital city but it's the largest city in america and as awe-inspiring as Rome was, that's for a lot of people what New York City looks like. And so this is the setup here that, that Paul develops in Romans um, that I thought would be very fitting uh, as we start uh, talking about this this morning. It says this in Romans 1, 11 through 16. Paul says this, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's uh, faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I plan many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now in order that I might have a harvest among you just as I have among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks and to non-Greeks, both to the wise and to the foolish. That is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. So in some respects, Andy is kind of like the Apostle Paul in the sense of going to a major city, okay, no pressure, going to a major urban setting and trying to bring the gospel in that setting. So uh, again, for those of us that maybe are not familiar with you, Andy, yeah. kind of share a little bit about how you got to New York City and what's going on there. Sure, yeah. So. For those of you who don't know our background, uh, my wife Rachel and I, we've been married 22 years and we have been in Youth with a Mission for 20, almost 21 of those years. And so we started off, um, you know, in Orlando, you know, we have over 1800 locations around the world. And so Orlando has been the place that we have based, been based. Um, but about five years ago, um, we really started to have our heart ignited for New York. We had uh, taken a team of, uh, we call it a school of evangelism there, about six months after 9-11 happened. And so that was kind of our first exposure and really got a heart for the city. But about five years ago, we were like, you know, what if we started a ministry where there? What if we started to go there on a consistent basis? And so we just started going there, you know, three days at a time, a week at a time. And then over the year of 2018 and 19, we got to live there for a year and walk the streets and just really get more of a heart for the city, get to understand its rhythms, its patterns, um, the different boroughs, all the different people that live there. And just the more we went, the more our heart began to just be ignited for that. And so just the last five years, that's what we've been doing. Um, after living there about once a quarter, we try to take a team up there. Um, usually my wife goes up about three or four times a year with the team. and. They've been ministering to, you know, 
ladies that have been a part of dating drug dealers, been in prostitution, um, you know, whether it's the rich, the poor, and everything in between, it's just a, um, as you know, it's a melting pot of cultures and peoples and economic statuses, and it's just, you know, it's a, it's the place I think that we love most on the planet to minister. So yeah. that's a very, you know, small bit of what we get to yeah. do there. So, so when you're on the streets, I, I'm assuming that's the hub of what you guys are doing. You're on the streets yeah. ministering to people. Are you it, downtown? Are you, where are you at? And, and, and what is the average person like that you're talking to? I mean, yeah. if I can say that, I realize yeah, yeah. New York City's got how many different nat- nationalities yeah. represented and things like that. Yeah, there's over yeah there's over 600 languages Gosh. spoken. There's like eight 8.5 million people that live in the five boroughs of New York. Um, and yeah, over 600 languages Gosh. spoken. So you do, you know, to say the average New Yorker is a very hard terminology because yeah. it can be, you know, the way the city's broken up, you can be in one section, one block district, and it's Puerto Rican, and you walk three blocks down and it's completely Asian and everyone there speaks Mandarin or Korean or whatever. And so I wouldn't say there's like, I wouldn't necessarily say there's an average person. It just depends on where you are in that district. Um, But yeah, like you're, you know, I would say a majority of what we focus on there is getting involved with what's going on and then striking up spiritual conversations with people. So it might be playing pickup basketball in Central Park and getting to build relationships there. It might be my wife taking kids to the park, building relationships with, you know, million, you know, women who are married to men who, you know, work on Wall Street, make millions of dollars. And then the next day you might be in the projects, striking up a conversation, not myself, but my wife with these young ladies that are prostitutes, dating drug dealers, and trying to convince them that you know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, but all they've known the last 35 years of their life is a pattern of this is how you pay for rent, this is how you get the things you need is prostituting yourself out. And it's, you know, not only are you wrestling with someone that's lost, but you're dealing with a worldview of, you know, kind of death and destruction. So you're trying to pull someone out of darkness into light, but also it's not a, you know, how to pull them out of a lifestyle of prostitution, dealing drugs, all those different things. So it's it's a multiple layer of not just bringing transformation with the gospel, but almost a a pattern of lifestyle that's got to change as well and trying to pull them out of those ideologies and mindset so would you say you're not necessarily excuse the use of the word targeting a particular people group Mm -hmm. as much as what more kind of relational evangelism or kind of a lifestyle evangelism strategy yeah Yeah. um i mean we we because the reason i'm saying that is because everything andy said all of us can do yes i mean even if you're not a big pickup basketball guy can you go to the park Mm-hmm. Could you just talk to somebody hanging out? You know, the, a lot of the stuff of what they're doing yeah. is very practical. Yeah, I think I think we, especially in Western society, we have the mindset like, I'm going to go do some event or a program, and that's going to reach people. And yes, that does work. But I mean, even Billy Graham said of all, you know, he would do all these crusades. Less than one percent of the people that attended actually became born again and started walking out that lifestyle of following Jesus. And so I think, I think, you know, most missionaries that are the most impactful and believers, like you're saying, is to do like Jesus. He lived with us and walked among us. He didn't do programs. He didn't do events as his way of reaching people as he would just get in your life. Like, Hey, what's going on? Like an example, easy example, last summer when we were just at the park, funny story my wife will probably hear this but my wife and I were kind of in an argument at this park and so I just went off and sat by myself just to like kind of cool myself off sitting next to this guy struck up a a spiritual conversation with him and we started talking about you know religion and it can easily if you've ever been in those conversations they can really go nowhere because it, it can turn into an argument if you're not careful and if if you're ever sharing the gospel and you feel like you won the argument you've actually lost um, because if you're 
you know, isolating this relationship because you feel like you were victorious in getting your points across. It was kind of pointless. So I could kind of feel it going there. And so I just was like, look, man, this guy, I was like, look, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm a real person like you. In fact, I'm over here because I'm fighting with my wife who's across the park there. And I'm like, but man, I just want you to know that God loves you and God cares about you. He was kind of opened up to me about work and things that were just not going well. He was a Wall Street guy. And I was like, look, man, I'm, I follow Jesus and I'm arguing with my wife. I need help. I need salvation. I need hope. And I'm like, dude, like this issue you're dealing with at work, all these religious ideas you're telling me, I mean, it gets, it's great and it sounds like you're really smart and everything, but your only hope is Jesus. And when I said that, it was just like the wall went down and he just completely changed and just opened up his life. He began to pour out some of his issues. He kind of got choked up a bit. And just, I, th I think if I remember right, he actually just, I was just like, at the end, I was like, hey, can I just pray with you about this? I didn't lead him to Jesus in that moment, but I left him with the taste that God is good, that God cares about him. And so to answer your question, I think, I think the best way that we can reach people, whether you're in Vietnam or Azerbaijan or Bridgman, Michigan, is to just live with people, walk among them, and don't just tell them, everything that you know about God and have that be your evangelism experience, but listen to their stories and what's going on in their life. Because many times if we listen to people, we go, okay, that's where you need the hope of God, not just all this information that I know about God. Yeah. So Yeah. No, that, that's, that's really good stuff. What would you say that New York City on the streets is open to the gospel, uh, close to the gospel, or is it just like any other city in America? Yeah, I would say, um, I, would, it, I mean, it's probably America is America, um, but I think it's just like anywhere else, you, you find the right people. Not everyone is open. You know, New York is still hustle and bustle. And so sometimes like, you know, you're on the subway or, you know, you're running on the streets. People are in a hurry to get somewhere. And so it's sometimes hard to strike up a conversation. That's why I think it's important there or here or anywhere is if we can get involved with things that are going on, um, you know, like playing basketball or, you know, volunteering at, you know, a soup kitchen or different things or serving the city, you know, even if it's not a Christian event, um, you know, hey, we're doing trash pickup at the beach, go serve the city. And I think through that you can build relationships with different people. But I do think that, yes, there is an openness to the gospel when you can get those conversations going with people. And again, I think that openness is, am I here to take all my information and views and push them on you, even though you need to hear them? Or is it what's going on in your life? Is there anything I can pray with you about? What are some struggles you're dealing with? Oh, well, let me tell you about the hope that I have and how it applies to that situation. So I think people are open, but I think we need to give them the opportunity to just share their life and actually be interested in what's going on with them versus me chalking up another victory that I shared the gospel or led someone yeah. to Jesus. And, and again, I think this is important for all of us to hear because all of us can do this. All of us um, can, can, again, listen to somebody else and, and, and listen to what they're struggling with or just, you know, uh, strike up a conversation. So I think this is this is good. This yeah. is encouraging. I think one of the and some people that may watch this know about this, but one of the most impactful things we've done in the last five years is every Christmas Rachel does something called Christmas cheer, and she, you know, usually it's it's a team of like six or seven women that go. We've had bigger teams at different times, but they basically just take three or four day window and they. You know, they usually basically take money and they go to the city and they just look for ways to bless people. So it might be one season they did a toy drive and they took um, all these toys to these kids in this home that didn't have Christmas presents and they gave it to them, shared with them about Jesus. Other time it's buying winter coats or they'll just go to Starbucks and stand in line and tell people, hey, I'm buying your coffee, order whatever you want, right? And some people are like, hey, thanks, I gotta go. Other people are like, why are you doing this? and they'll share with them about the love of God and people will just open up their lives, how their marriage is struggling, how 
they're out of a job and they'll get to pray with them, minister to them, buy them groceries, all these different things. But again, it's not, it's going and saying, how can I serve you? And through that serving of humanity, I think so many times it opens up the door, you know, for the gospel. You know, you meet a practical need and then you get the chance to meet a spiritual need. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Servant evangelism is powerful. Yeah. How, okay, as you're doing this, have you been able to work with the local church or how is, how is that going? I know that's been a, a bit of a challenge yes. in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we had a relationship with a church that we probably been working with the last four years. Um, in this past, about a year ago, they let us use their um, building for housing. We brought a YWAM team in and they let us use that. So it's gradually growing, you know, partnering with local churches. Um, now post COVID has been, you know, everything kind of abruptly stopped and you're having to, New York's been in one of those harder places of being actual to meet publicly and all those different things. But one of the, probably I would say the leading, one of the leading pastors there in the city, Rachel was talking with him and he was just like, we need, we love YWAM, we, we need people here, bring teams here. Like, it's almost like they're rebuilding um, the city in terms of spirituality, just with post COVID, whatever, everything that's happened. It's like a fresh season and it's like, so many people moved out of New York City um, there's still people that obviously live there, but a lot of, you know, believers moved out. It's like, this is hard. We can't do this. And they're just like, come, we need people. So it's very, um, in terms of the local church partnering with us, they're like, come, we want people to come. We need people to come. It's the perfect season of rebuilding God's kingdom into the future. So the future is bright. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so open. It's not a it's not a competition. It's very much a part. Yeah, because so. I know I know that's been you know yeah. we've talked about this and very expensive. Yes. To buy a building in downtown New York City, very yeah. exp you know, and so working with other churches that are already established, I'm yeah. sure helps, and I'm sure you're providing them some encouragement and for them to see what God is doing. You know. Yeah, it's been. I mean, it's the way God's. You know, we've been able to use church buildings last year we had a family that donated to um for a year they let us use two apartment spaces so that gave us a year of kind of free housing so we could get teams there because that's the biggest deal and so i mean that's that's kind of a crazy dream of ours right now is to own a building in manhattan and so i mean we're not doing any fundraisers for it at the moment but just kind of trusting that god's gonna gonna open a door to a conversation or relationship because just where we want to go and how we want to impact in the city, um, you really do need a beachhead, which, you know, in, in that kingdom of darkness so that you can wage war on the enemy. So, yeah. yeah. So as we kind of conclude here, and, and of course I want you to let us know how we can pray for you, what would you say is the greatest success sure. you guys have had and what's been the biggest challenge? Sure. Um, I mean, the greatest success, the most fruitful thing, at least if you're just going, wow, over the last five years, is just the impact on, which sound might sound odd, I, I think, Rachel may give a different answer, but um, the impact of the nations, of just like I said earlier, you know, there's over 600 languages that have been spoken, or that are spoken there. And so I feel like it's, a, it's an amazing way to go into all the world and preach the gospel and yet do it in one central location. Um, and so I, for me personally, like that's been one of the biggest impacts, whether it's, you know, reaching Chinese people or, you know, individuals from North Africa and just having amazing conversations with, you know, guys from Uganda or Muslims from the Middle East that, um, you know, I lived two blocks from a mosque when I was there, being able to talk with them, just the variety of ministry, but also just the impact on the nations I think has been the most fruitful. And then I think kind of what we were saying, the biggest hurdle there is, it's a simple thing, is housing. It's just so expensive for housing that we, you know, God always makes a way for us to go and be there and get there. So God always provides. But I think long-term, we'd love to have an established space there where we can continually send teams and possibly, you know, maybe one day we move back there full-time you know, 
depending on where our kids are at in the future. So that's that's kind of the big hurdle for us right now, and the biggest prayer request, I think. Yeah. It's just, and, we're, and it's, it's not like, hey, it's not like a hint, hint to anybody to give money. It's just like we really believe that God's going to do something impossible, and it's going to be like, wow, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. And we can be like, yeah, you're right. It's it's not. Because yeah, so it's not like looking Lord. for a random apartment in Marion yeah. County. Yeah. Hey, cool, I got an apartment. It's 2000 a month. Yeah. It's a little pricey. But, you know, if if a door opens for a place, you know, in Manhattan, you know God had yeah. to move yeah. some things. I mean, it's just, it's just powerful. So, yeah, so, no, thank you for being with yeah. us. Thank us. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, again, I think that the key takeaway, Church, is that so much of what they do, I mean, in some respects, Andy has just demystified missions for all of us. And all of us can do what they're doing. It's not like it's a, I mean, yes, they've got a unique calling, but very practical, everyday, just being involved in a local community, in the schools, in the, you know, whatever's going on, local festivals, different things like that, just being around that, that's how we connect with people. And so that this should be uh, an encouraging word, also maybe a bit of a convicting word, because um, we don't have to wait to have a, a big event, a big revival or something like that, to think that, hey, I can get involved in evangelism. It's right in front of us every single day. Yeah. You know, all the different things that we're involved in. So um, I'd like to pray for you, yeah, pray for your ministry. Sure. Is that cool? Can we yeah. pray, church? Of course we can. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for, um, for, for what you're doing through Andy and Rachel and, and through YWAM in New York City. And God, we continue to come into agreement with them that God, your hand of blessing and strength would be upon them. And that, Father God, doors would continually be open, Father God, relationally, uh, financially. Father God, we agree with them that, Father God, they would have the means to secure uh, consistent housing in downtown uh, New York City, Father God, in the Manhattan area, Father God. And Lord God, we believe for this and we, we come into agreement with them and ask that, Father God, you would open up doors and you would bring about favor. With, uh, upon them and upon their ministry. And Father, I also pray for every single person that is watching this morning, that Father God, you would just convict them, even as I am convicted, hearing just very practical stories about God, what you can do in normal everyday living. Father God, let us be provoked in our spirits and God motivated uh, by your Holy Spirit to share the gospel in any context we're in. Father, whether it's in a local school, whether it's in aisle six of a grocery store, whether it's at a local park. Father God, I pray open doors for us, Father, to share the gospel this summer and beyond. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, it was great being with you. Andy, thank you so much for being with us. Yep, and welcome. until next week, we call you blessed. Take care.